If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello again and welcome to Vacation Rental Success. And would you believe this is episode number 70? Can't believe we have got to, well, got right the way through 70 episodes. And uh, lovely to see that we have new listeners coming on board every single week. Welcome to you all. And if you haven't um, listened to Vacation Rental Success before, then you won't know that every month we have... um, a get together. I have a get together with my friend Matt Landau from vacationrentalmarketingblog.com. And we spend a happy half hour just uh, doing what we call as a monthly mashup, just talk about this and that and whatever co- really comes to us in the moment uh, about the va- about vacation rentals and what's going on in the vacation rental world. So welcome, Matt, once again. Lovely to uh, be with you. And here, here it is, March and we're in a winter wonderland again. You are. I've heard it's still snowing. That's just crazy. Yep. Snowed overnight. So uh, we had gone back to all green and now it's all white again this morning. But, you know, the temperature's got, temperature is going up this week. And uh, I, I think spring will be in the air. I mean, we'll be getting to double digits Fahrenheit. Uh, no, we're centigrade. Double digits centigrade this week. So, so Heather, when you with your vacation rental in Exuma, are you planning on avoiding the winters, or is that eventually? Eventually, I mean the the January to April out there is peak season. So because I'm building it as a vacation rental, I think for the first five years or so, other people are going to be enjoying it in the mm-hmm. winter. But, you know, it, it leaves me free to go to other places. So, you know, I, I want to go back to Costa Rica. I want to go to Panama. Well, you've got your open invitation, as you know. Can't wait. So, uh, so yes, you know, maybe maybe next winter, maybe uh, 2017, but certainly in the next couple of years, I'll be making my way down to you because, uh, you know, we had that very brief get-together in um, Phoenix a couple of years ago, and, uh, and it will be love, lovely to catch up face-to-face again. Absolutely. I would look forward to that. So um, what have you been doing then the past uh, past couple of weeks? You've been on vacation, right? Yeah, I took an amazing vacation with my family to the Mayan Riviera in Mexico. Um, I flew into Cancun, which is a very easy flight from pretty much any state in the United States and Latin America. Um, and then we drove for about an hour and a half out of Cancun on a beautiful eight-lane highway, uh, past Playa del Carmen, which is still a little bit of an overly tourist-done destination for our taste. And we got to the town or municipality of Tulum, which has kind of developed an identity of kind of this authentic, um, organic-feeling beachfront strip. A couple uh, friends of mine have hotels there, and we rented a gorgeous vacation rental on the bay um, a five minutes to the right of Tulum, and I think it might have been the nicest, most complete vacation rental that my family has ever stayed in. We try to rent a, a rental one, about once a year, and uh, we've been more or less all over the Caribbean and Central America as well as the States, and this rental was absolutely perfect. I was really impressed with the owner, whose name is Anna, and the link for the rental, if you want to share it in, in your show notes, is casa-aquamarine, A-C-U-A marine.com. And I don't even know the owner personally. My mother did the majority of the correspondence. But I got to give I gotta give props to Anna. She put together quite a perfect vacation experience for us. Everything was, was thought through. And your standards are high. So, yeah. so what was it? What made it perfect? You just got the feeling that the host... Um, And I think this describes a lot of um, people kind of who listen to your podcast and who follow my blog. The host had thought everything through. They had put themselves in the shoes of the the guests. So 
Upon arrival, we had all the relevant information that we needed in order to A, get to the property, B, do some grocery shopping, C, access, um, you know, kind of insider tips and locals who could provide us with special uh, experiences. Uh, in the house itself, uh, the kitchens were supremely equipped. It was right on the beach and the staff of the house kept the little white sand beach absolutely pristine. The snorkeling outside was great and we had maps in the house that would provide us with the best spots to snorkel. Uh, it was just one of, those, one of those times that you felt like you were really being looked out for. And while Anna wasn't actually on the property herself, I think she's based in, in uh, Texas, um, it was just it kind of, um, you felt like you were in really good hands. So I really wanted to give her a shout out and maybe one day I'll, I'll actually connect with her um, because I do feel like uh, it, this was the perfect example of a property and a business that was run really, really well, very professionally. However, I felt like some of the front end marketing that she could be doing, for instance, professional photographs and um, a little bit more of a professional website and, and some more um, the use of some tools in her correspondence, I feel like could bring her marketing up to par with the absolute supreme level of, of service that she provides on site. So again, huge, huge kudos to Anna. And perhaps one day we can get her, you know, on the podcast or on the blog and, and see how she operates such a, such a perfect business. So did she know that she had a celebrity staying there? A celebrity? No, <laughs> she didn't know. She didn't know. And I, and I, and I copied and pasted a lot of the correspondence, which which again was incredibly thoughtfully done. It was, it was very clear that she, A, had a ton of authority um, on the information about the area, and B, it was, just re it was presented very nicely, but I, I don't know if you read through some of those threads. It was a little bit overwhelming, um, and there are now so many wonderful tools that can be used so inexpensively, in a lot of cases free, to, to kind of bring your, your marketing, your, your correspondence up to date. Um, that I feel like with some very small little improvements, she could probably double her business. Yeah, I, d I did read through um, through the threads in, in your inner circle. And w you know what I love about this um, this community that you have was the way that everybody piled in and and gave their 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 suggestions and recommendations on on how all that um, that, that communication between Anna and, and yourself or whether it's Anna and your mother could have been made, um, I was going to say a lot better, but in fact, it's, it's just taking that wonderful information and putting it in a better format. And there were so many mm -hmm. different suggestions on how, how she could have done it. Absolutely. And one of the cool things to me is that you don't need to be an expert to give your own opinion about this sort of thing. You simply need to be a traveler who knows what they like. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the, the sort of beautiful things about that particular thread, and I think the community in general, is that people feel comfortable enough to, you know, share what they think could, could be improved. And it doesn't mean that they're a marketing expert. It simply means that they didn't feel something was clear enough or they didn't feel something was professionally done enough. And, and sub contributing that information in a constructive way is nothing but helpful for, for the recipient. And I, do you know, I think that there, there are... A, a quite a few different online forums and places where people can go and you know there's Facebook groups just like the one that, uh, that that you had before you moved over to the inner circle but uh, but I have found yours one where the support is just so so open and honest without at any time being negative um, and mm -hmm. that there's so much negative stuff goes on and uh, you know I've I've been on a I've been on a forum where I've I've quickly retreated where I've said something and, and been attacked for it. And mm -hmm. that, that's, it, it's, it's not constructive. Um, certainly isn't positive. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, great shout out for your online community and, and we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about it later anyway, but, um, Thanks, it's, um, it's, it's definitely a place I enjoy going and communicating with other owners. So, uh, so your, your your vacation was good. I mean, I'm looking looking at this um, at, at the pictures at the moment on on their home away listing, and, I, and my goodness, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Mm hmm. And those aren't even professional photographs. Imagine a, a a great photographer going in and some architectural photographs of the beach and the pool and the balcony, which was maybe the nicest balcony I've ever <laughs> I've ever <laughs> enjoyed. Uh, I think it could just it would do the property itself justice. 
Beautiful. So how long were you there? We were there for seven days. Mm-hmm. Was Amazing. That, was that enough? It's never enough. <laughs> Yes, but you go back to your own bit of paradise, so. Yeah, but unfortunately, this paradise here, I have people knocking on my door asking for things all day. (laughs) (laughs) And of course, it's nice to get away with family too. Absolutely. So so while you were there, um, I was at the um, Cottage Life show in Toronto. Um, and how was that? It was it was amazing. This is a show that happens every year. And you know, to give you a bit of a background, the, the the cottage, what we call cottage country in Ontario, is a you know pretty massive area, range for about four hours um, north, east, and west of Toronto. I'm not south because you go south, you straight into Lake Ontario, and then into US. But in that, uh, they, you know, in this sort of horseshoe that surrounds um, Toronto, uh, Toronto, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of lakes and rivers, and every one of these lakes is rimmed with waterfront properties. So you can have these tiny little lakes with you know sixty or seventy properties around it, and then to the to the what we call the big three: Lake Muskoka, Lake. Um, Lake Joseph and Lake Rosso, which are where all the celebrities go. So Goldie Horn has a property on Lake Muskoka that she comes to every year. And, and a lot of other really well-known celebrities actually own properties in this area. So every um, first, first, either the last weekend of March, first weekend of April is, um, is what's called the Cottage Life Show. And it's a massive event held at the uh, the big conference center in Toronto. And it just displays absolutely everything you could imagine related to cottage living, from docks and decks to water systems to um, boats, motorized and non-motorized, and then everything, every, every other, everything you can possibly think of. Hmm. And they also have a massive realty section about 60, 70, maybe, maybe there were 100 realtors there. I don't know. It was a huge realty section where people come along and they start their cottage hunting for, for the season because everything's been shut down for the winter. So it's like everybody comes out of the woodwork. But what <laughs> I, and we have, you know, for our rental agency, we have a booth there. We have had for the last um, um, 12 years. And we always see a lot of um, owners who who are interested in renting out their places, who are renting them out. But this year was it was the first year where we've we've had so many inquiries from people who are thinking of buying, and integral to their purchase plans is rental. And this hmm, has that- this just hasn't happened before. So that's a new trend that you kind of spotted this year. Yeah, it, and and I talked to the realtors, and they said that they've been overwhelmed with the amount of people who are saying we can only buy this place if we can have you know if, if we can rent it out, even if it's four or five weeks of the year. Um, property taxes in these you know in these country areas are, are very very high. Uh, you know, on some of these big lakes, they're 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 paying in the sort of 20 odd thousand a year in property tax and and that may be at the low end. Um, so in order to, to fund um, a purchase and keep it going, they are, they're having to rent out. So it's, it's an interesting trend because I'm, you know, seeing, I'm hearing this from other realtors in the U S as well. The second home market, Whereas once it was just for, you know, you've got a family and you want somewhere that you take them for a few weeks in the summer and it's going to, and maybe your friends use it. But now it's rental is just this integral part of the purchase plan. And that fits perfectly into your new kind of niche with the real estate agents, right? Did you have a lot of traction on that angle? We're we're launching big time next week. Um, we, We have a... We're starting with a. We had a small launch, and and we had a, a few people who've signed up and are starting the course. And we're getting some really really good feedback from it. Um, but next week is the major launch, and you know our, our we 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 have a a promotion going out to about ten thousand names next week. So wow. <laughs> watch this space. But it's interesting that 
in my research for that, I'm finding that that realtors in general don't have a handle on you know or, or, or aren't looking at how to handle this market, this new second home market with rental in it as well. So, yeah, um, we are hoping for the best on this one and um, and and are actually expecting a lot of good traction. I love that. I'm actually really looking forward to that. Give me a shoot me an email when you're launching, will you? Oh, I will indeed. I will indeed. So, so yeah. So at the show, um, and my owner shout out this um, this month is is going to an owner. Um, um, he's actually um, given us a couple of questions over the last couple of months, and um, he contacts me quite regularly. And I've seen some, some great changes in his website and and the way he's marketing his properties. And his name's Dean Curtis. And his uh, his vacation rentals can be found at serenityvacationrentals.com. And I'll put a link to it as well. And Dean started with, with one cottage, then went to two. And now they're in the process of purchasing their third, which is, you know, I just love to see this when this mm-hmm. expansion happens. And and Dean and I got to um, to to talking at the show about um, an, about standards in the vacation rental industry. And we've had this sort of conversation before and we'll be getting together shortly to start talking about setting up an association of vacation rental, of cottage rental owners and agencies here in Ontario. So I'm really quite excited about that because it's, I mean, we're, we're, we're facing regulations, um, you know, the, the, the legal stuff is popping up in different locations and and it's tough for an individual owner to to tackle this when they suddenly get notice of a potential ban or or the you know that there's something going on at council level or township level and they really don't know how to tackle it so we're you know we're looking at getting this collective voice together to um to, to deal with some of these legal and regulatory issues that are coming up. So that's quite exciting for us. Yeah, I'm looking at Dean's site right now. It looks like he's made a lot of progress since the last time I checked it out. Yes, yes. Now, that, that takes me on to one of Dean's questions. When you opened up his website, you got the music, right? No. Oh, did, did you not? Oh. Uh, maybe you didn't have your volume turned up. There it comes. Is, is that on my side or yours? It's now coming on. It's on that's on yours. Okay. Now, his question is, what do we think about having music when a site opens? Now, I have some, I have some very strong feelings on this, um, but I'm happy to, um, to let you kick off. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I find that the general rule with, with websites is you don't want anything intrusive or unpredictable when a guest is coming to your site that could potentially turn them off and make them leave. So whether that means a pop-up, um, a pop-up box that's asking for some kind of promotion or, you know, font or text colors that are outrageous or a layout that's very unusual, um, or in this case, music that pops up and maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm at the library and all of a sudden music pops up and it's super loud. I want to leave. So I tend to be from the school of simplicity and predictability. Um, that's not to say that that music wasn't lovely, <laughs> but that's just kind of the way that I the way that I roll. I'm absolutely 100% with you. Um, you know, I, I, I find I, it annoys me on Facebook when I open up Facebook and and I've got videos yeah. running and I don't want that. But you know, yeah. that's Facebook. Um, yes, I'm. As you, I, I often, if I'm talking to somebody like I am talking to you now, I might open up a um, a website so I can see uh, see you know what I'm talking you know what what we're talking about and and yes, I find the music a little off putting because I'm I'm immediately going to the oh where's the volume I need to turn that down right yeah um, the way I see it you don't want to do anything to potentially turn someone away and I don't think. And I think music, the only thing that I could possibly do, other than maybe a couple people who, who might think it's lovely, is turn, turn someone away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I love this. Um, Dean, I know you're going to be listening. Um, love the, uh, the upgrades you're doing to the website. 
Um, and I know it's a work in progress. So, um, so keep going at it. I, I think, you know, you've, you've captured it. The big pictures on the, on the homepage is just so important. And I will say this, I've, I, um, I visited a hotel in Panama called El Otro Lado. And it's this gorgeous little boutique hotel in the middle of the jungle, but also right on the beach, uh, right on the, the coast. And in their rooms, when you arrive, is the most amazing playlist coming uh, emanating from this speaker, which has an iPod attached. And you uh, immediately, uh, the, the experience is heightened because of this brilliant music selection. And it turns out the, the owner of the property is a, an artist. So there's a reason why that music is so fitting. Um, but what they do is they provide a link to their playlist on their website. So if you go to the website and if you go to the hotel and you think to yourself, wow, that music uh, brings me back on the website there, they have a link to the entire playlist. And if I'm not mistaken, it, they even have a link to their streaming um, like radio channel or something. So if if music is a part of your brand, I would say there's a way to utilize it. But the automatic play upon load, I would say, let's try to avoid that. OK, well, I'm. I've got a feeling that um, I mean Dean, Dean was there at the weekend with uh, with his 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 family, uh, and I've got a feeling that maybe some of um, the, the, the family would be agreeing with us. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I, I will leave that I will leave that to him. No doubt I'll be talking to him later in the week. So so we'll see what. Uh, but amazing what progress, we, Dean. I'm very impressed with the site. Going back a little bit to what um, Dean and I have been talking about about an association and about getting people together. This is something that you've been promoting through the um, through the the inner circle, and you've got people really, really talking about it. So, you posted your blog post recently, which was called you know, "What Is Matt's Theory?" A theory of change. A theory of it was, change. And the yeah. subtitle is "If this isn't working, let's fix it." So, tell us a bit more about that. Where you're th- where, where you're coming from on this? Okay, so. Uh, the first part, I think, is very familiar to most people in the industry. Uh, competition has increased over the past 10 or 15 years. The industry has become much more mainstream. There's many more travelers. There's now new corporations that are looking to take advantage of this emerging trend. And what um, the, the independent vacation rental owner is now presented with is more or less a fork in the road. You can either choose to continue with the major listing sites, and, and um, that goes for VRBO and HomeAway and FlipKey and everything in that bucket, um, or you can begin establishing your own independent brand. And I think most of the people, when they hear that, um, those two ch- options, will say, I'd like to explore uh, developing my own independent brand. But the question that always follows that is how can we compete for bookings with the big property managers and listing sites as an independent vacation rental owner? So that's where kind of my theory of change really begins. And the first thing that I kind of think might be a a um, misnomer about that phrase is that you're actually competing on a a one-to-one, like on a proportional basis with these massive sites because that's simply not the truth. Uh, as let's say someone who owns one vacation rental or maybe even three or five, you have such a limited amount of nights that you need to fill on your calendar. So your, um, your goal is going to be very manageable compared to a major listing site or a property manager who has that many nights times however many properties are under their umbrella. So the good news is that trying to uh, compete is actually not the right word. You're, you're more or less trying to kind of fill your own, your own bucket, fill up your calendar, utilize those repeat guests in the future so that they'll be coming back and staying with you on a regular basis. Uh, and that's actually a very manageable thing to do. But the second component is that what I've started to recognize about the best vacation rental owners in the world is that they're not out hunting these leads, so to say. They're actually farming them. They're building, uh, not unlike uh, planting, you know, some plants in the backyard and watering those plants and ultimately harvesting those plants 
Um, they're out there planting seeds. They're out there giving lots of useful information. They're out there learning the best tactics to blog, and they're out there um, connecting with other industry experts and people in their area who can help develop their authority. Um, so what I kind of arrived at, and this was really the first time that I've been able to articulate this, like literally sit down. I was in Tulum sitting in front of the beach, so I had nothing else to do. So I sat down and I said, okay, what do these people need? This small percentage, because let's be honest, I think the majority of people are not going to really have the time or patience to explore this option. And unfortunately, they're going to kind of be relegated to the default option, which is dependence. Um, So what do these people who want to be independent, who want to go out and begin farming their leads, what do they need? And my solution is a private group. They need a group of like-minded owners um, who are trying to achieve the same goals. Uh, Geographically speaking, it's it's irrelevant where these people are based. Um, If the person is within the same... um, Town as another, great, but at the same time, if they're halfway across the world, they can be benefiting from each other's little victories. Um, so the first thing that we need is a private group. And it, in the forums that I find online, like you mentioned earlier on, tend to be ridden with a lot of negativity, a lot of rants, a lot of uh, people who are simply not really serious. They're looking for shortcuts to go ahead and begin generating their bookings. So the private group is, is I think, a necessary thing. Um, they also need the right tactical approach. So when they're striving to reach these goals, people need to be developing best practices themselves. They need to be sharing what was working, what wasn't working. Um, at that point, you start to think, what about a co-op? And I know you had Rod with uh, AVROA on several months back, and I really enjoyed that podcast. Uh, and I have nothing but a great admiration for Rod. I think that's a massive challenge to, to take on. And uh, for that reason, I've kind of avoided getting involved in some sort of co-op just because there's a lot of inherent um, obstacles that I don't find, feel that I could personally solve for people. Um, but in that right tactical approach, people need to be rig- rigorously tracking what's working and what's not. And when you start to get an idea of what this community looks like, um, you can then start establishing indicators of success. You can say, okay... This is a technique that across the board, according to these uh, efficient and successful vacation rental owners, this technique is working. Um, You need to begin collecting information. You need to uh, be doing surveys and you need everyone actively to be participating. And lastly, you need to analyze. You need to be really critically looking at what's working and what's not. And to give you a quick example of, of something that has kind of spawned from what I'm trying to build is the top 10 uh, most cost-effective marketing techniques report that I put together. And it's for free on the front end of my blog, um, which basically identifies across on several hundred successful vacation rental owners what tactics cost the least amount of money and deliver the highest impact or the most bookings. And a perfect example of one of those tactics is taking leads over the phone. If someone is submitting to you a phone number across the board, vacation rental owners in my community said that if they can call that individual, if they can get them on the phone, whether it's for 30 seconds or two minutes, their chance at converting the inquiry increases exponentially. Does that mean that this is for every single person you need to be calling every single lead? No. Does it mean that every single owner needs to be using this tactic? Not necessarily. Um, But it's a perfect example of using this group think mentality, using this constructive and generous feedback and identifying best practices. So my little idea of a best practices conveyor belt is what I believe is the most realistic and effective way that this community, this group of individual owners and managers who want to do things on their own and not rely on the major listing sites can benefit from. Um, And that's just kind of what I've what I've been building. I've been plugging away. I've been doing it the right way, very slowly. Um, The people in there are all actively um, sort of participating in this movement. And who knows what will come of it? Maybe uh, several years from now, we'll be at several thousand members. Maybe it'll stay at 500 where we are right now. Um, I'm not really sure. But what I do know is that the process and the stuff that is going on right now is very proactive and is very progressive. 
And kind of like you mentioned earlier, I'm very proud to be in this group simply because everyone has that similar mindset. Everyone's positive. Everyone wants to learn something new and everyone is constructive in their criticism as opposed to um, non-constructive, as you see on some of the other forums. So that's kind of my theory for change. And, and when I see these complaints online about how terrible the listing sites are about changing their fees and changing the technology that allows the owner to interact with his or her guests, I really just wanted to be able to present a tangible, a concrete solution that we can attempt to work on as opposed to just complaining. So that's my theory for change. If this is not working, let's, let's fix it. Yeah, and I, I wholeheartedly endorse, actually, the, the inner circle. It's, um, I, I love to go in there, and, and just, it's a motivator. <laughs> a, apart from anything else, if, 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 if I ever get a little bit sort of despondent about the industry or where it's going and – um, what's happening in some of these other forums, it really is a motivator to to go there and, and be among like-minded people. So I'm going to be, I should put a link to it because I don't think we've really touched on it much more than the occasional mention here and there. So I just wanted to give you that opportunity to um, to share a little bit more about what it was about and, um, you know, your whole rationale behind um, the, the movement, I guess. I, I really appreciate it, Heather. And, I, and if I would take anything away from someone listening to the podcast, I would say, you know, maybe the inner, my inner circle is for you. Maybe it's not. That's fine. But if you can surround yourself with people in this same fight, um, I think we all understand the power of what a group can accomplish when everyone is on the same page. So just finding your own community, finding your own group that in, is, is good karma. Everyone is on the same sort of mission. Um, I think that is kind of where things are heading for this group of independents. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, all power to you for, for where you've gone from, from, the, from the Facebook group um, over to, um, to, to your own, uh, to this private group. But again, you know, it's, yeah, that, that, that's one option for people. There are a lot of other options. Um, you know, it, it could be a local association. It could be, mm-hmm. you know, something like um, Joel Rasmussen's group in you know, the Austin Rental Alliance, uh, you know, getting Absolutely. together with, with like-minded people in one community or, you know, people right across the world. But I think um, it, it is tough to operate this business in a vacuum on your own. Um, and a lot of people do it and perhaps they're not willing to put the time and effort in and they're going to get the results, but maybe not the results that, that they could achieve. Absolutely. Yeah. Just because you're deciding to kind of go at this alone with regards to the major listing sites does not mean that you're singularly alone in the mission. So I think in that sense, we all can help each other a lot. So, so you talked when you were talking about this at the beginning, you were talking about farming and sowing seeds and that sort of segues into um, just one other area, one other topic I want to touch on today, which is, is Twitter. Because I've been seeing some really good results on Twitter recently. Uh, and I've also been just really, really irritated at <laughs> so much self-serving promotion that's going on there, which, you know, I, I can't see that it's working because I'm, you know, I look at the self-serving tweets that are going on and, and then I yeah, look. Can you give me an example? Um, j- just the, you know, all I, all you're, you're an owner and all you're out there doing is promoting yourself and your property. This is my property. You know, it could be, this is, you know, I've, I've got a discount on it. Offering a special or you yes. should book this week now. Do it, do it, do it. Yeah. I follow, I follow. Yeah, that, that's right. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Well, do you know, I'm not going to follow you because I have no interest in, in following your property. What I would have interest in is following you if you're telling me about the area, about a restaurant that's just opened, about an art gallery, um, some, you know, um, some event that's happening. Uh, Alan Egan talks about this a lot when he's talking about you know, the, the whole issue of being the, the local expert. I commended a, a couple, I did a hat tip to a couple of, of owners um, on Twitter this week because they do exactly that. Then they they're not promote. They've re- very rarely mentioned their own properties at all, but they're making themselves into the local gurus uh, on Twitter. 
Um, one of them is is our own Donna Martinez, um, who's out there with her abalone. Um, and if you can find her on Twitter at at abalone bay vr. And she's you know, amazing, <laughs> isn't she? She's I everywhere. Mean, she she's you know her, a, a tweet this morning. In fact, you know half an hour ago is wine pairings with your favorite movie snack movies while staying at Sea Ranch, which is her place. <laughs> which is a per- terrific way of doing it. And she's got a link to um, a, a little segment on wine pairings with movie snacks. So she's taken that and she's tied it in to just saying, you know, when you're staying here, you can do this. So to, to a degree, I guess that's some form of self-promotion because she has got her place in there, but she hasn't actually got a link to it. The link is to the segment on wine pairings with movie snacks. Um, another one, how to buy your dream road bike. Then ride it along Sea Ranch Trails. So once again, she's, she's put the, the hashtag, hashtag Sea Ranch, which is, is for her property. Um, but the link is buying a dream road bike. Nothing to do with the property itself, but she's getting out there and, and then engaging with people. And the other one I wanted to make a shout out to is at Seaside Suffolk. Suffolk is a county in uh, in England. Her tweets are doing much the same. She's engaging a little bit more with people. When somebody says something about the area, she's immediately going back and commenting on it and just pitching herself as a local expert. Somebody had mentioned a restaurant And she's gone back and she said the beach house closed down several years ago. It's now called the kitchen. And then she's she's just put the uh, link to um, the Twitter address of the kitchen. She's got, you know, she'll put photographs of of something that's happening in the area. And Twitter's now great. You you know, you can have uh, you can upload images as well and those get such a lot of traction and retweets if you're uploading an image but not an image and I, what a lot I see is you know this is my place here's right. an image of it don't right. don't do that yeah upload an image of a sign for the local restaurant that's just opened or or some we are waves coming in on the beach and just with it with a little caption a, a tweet that says beautiful morning on the beach yeah so that's my little rant, but I also wanted to add in that um, I've um, I've been promoting Twitter as a platform for engaging with the media for a long time, and and I did a I was watching our morning our national morning TV show the other day. You know they weren't even talking about holidays, but I just thought, well, I'm going to send them a tweet, and my tweet was, and I'm going to put this in the show notes. Vacation rental is changing across Canada. Higher guest expectations plus Airbnb plus more staycations is fascinating. Segment, question mark. So basically I'm saying, you know, this is what my pitch is for a segment on your show. 30 seconds later, I get a response Uh from them. It says, at Cottage Guru, that's my Twitter handle. That is interesting, exclamation mark. I'll bring it up at our next pitch meeting. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> that was that was easy. That was easy. Now I haven't heard from them, but I will follow it up, and I'm I'm, I'm about to follow it up with a um, a more detailed pitch, which I will mm. email to them. But it was just getting that connection, um, and that's what to me that's what using Twitter is all about. It's not about saying this is me, here I am, and here's where my place is. It's uh, a lot more than that. So. That's my yeah. little Twitter rant this morning. <laughs> I love that. I'm so with you on that, Heather. I feel like even outside of Twitter, a lot of people have have this this me 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 mindset, and we talk a lot about permission in today's marketing environment, and and the people who try to interrupt you, which is the obviously the opposite of gaining someone's trust and their permission. The people who try to interrupt you are increasingly just like ignored. I mean, the more interruptions that you have, the more emails that you did not solicit, the more, you know, phone calls that you receive at dinner time from someone trying to sell you a pair of uh, cell phones. This stuff is increasingly irrelevant and ultimately will become obsolete. 
And the only real way that remains and the most sustainable way um, to connect with people is to be useful and to gain their trust. And the only way you can do that is by providing the kind of information that, that you mentioned. So I would encourage everyone to, to, to be more helpful than they are salesy. And that doesn't mean you can't ever promote your property. I like to use the one to nine ratio, one salesy post for every nine helpful non-salesy posts, um, just gaining trust and helping people and being very subtle about when you do sell something that explicitly. Yeah, absolutely. And and just to finish up, I, I don't know if you've ever come across um, something that Gary Vaynerchuk did um, a while back. Yeah, love yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he tweeted a while back, and I just I just, I just came across it the, the other day, and I thought it was just amazing. He tweeted, "Good morning. Anything I can do for you today?" Question mark. And he got a ton of responses. <laughs> you know, yeah. pe- people asked him for um, they they asked him to come on their podcast, which actually he did. Uh, somebody asked for a consultation which he did. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, a few people asked for a free, for, for advanced copies of his book, um, Jab, 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 Right Hook, which he didn't. And then there was <laughs> one that uh, this guy just said, eggs, I need eggs. And he went back and he said, okay, what's your address? I mean it. And an hour Hello? later, an hour later, there was a, and, and they were, you know, and they're not even in the same city. An hour later, a knock on this guy's door and he goes to the door and I think there were 20 dozen eggs outside. <laughs> I love it. Which, which he used and then, you know, he, he couldn't use them all. So he gave them away to his neighbors. But it was, I just loved that as, as a, an example of, you know, using Twitter to, to ask if you can do something for somebody and then surprising someone. I think that's a great t- challenge for all your listeners If you have even five minutes one day, sit down at Twitter and do something useful or helpful for someone else that you admire. I think that's a great little challenge. It builds good karma, and ultimately it will come back to you in the end, and it costs nothing. And I would say that if anybody's going to do that, do a random act of kindness on Twitter somehow, and then post it in the show notes, in the comments, and let us know what you've done. I'm going to take that challenge myself. Okay. Perfect. Matt, once again, I love these monthly, monthly chats. Um, I do believe people are enjoying them. Um, you know, we're certainly getting a lot of listeners <laughs> through them. So we, as, as ever, if, if anybody wants to make a comment on anything that Matt and I have covered today, please do so. Um, one of us, one or other of the others will be back to answer you if you've got any questions. And um, is there anything else you want to add before we sign off, Matt? Not at all. I hope everyone has a wonderful week. Yeah, absolutely. Easter's coming up. So uh, really have a good time. I would love to have a green Easter this year instead of a white one. So I have my fingers crossed for that. Fingers crossed for you down here in Panama, Heather. (laughs) Thanks a lot, Matt. Talk to you again next month. Okay, see ya. Well, thanks, Matt, once again for another great monthly mashup. And I think we uh, we covered off quite a lot there. One thing that Matt didn't mention that I just want to touch on is um, the blog post that he's just written. And if you go over to Vacation Rental Marketing blog and just have a look at the um, the current post, which is titled "Nothing Stops a Bullet Like a Job." And you really need to go along and read that because it Matt's talking about the first year anniversary of Fortaleza Tours, which is the company that emerged from his gang intervention and reintegration program, Esperanza, that he talks about quite a lot uh, along the way on his blog and in the inner circle. It really makes an interesting read. It was t- really inspiring and motivating. Just just take a look at the map on that page that the chief of police gave to Matt to show him how crime has reduced to nothing in the neighborhood that the reintegration program is working in. And if you can, put your hands in your pockets and donate something to this program. I think it's hugely worthwhile and, and it 
you know, Matt gives us a huge amount. And I think this is a wonderful way of giving back. So hopefully, Matt, you're going to reach your goal, uh, your monetary goal there. And, uh, and hopefully some of these, our listeners will come along and help you do that. Well, that's the end of episode number 70. So only 30, 30 more now before we get to the big one zero zero. Uh, I'm still working on who we get to to be the special guest on that show. But, uh, you know, it's a little way away yet. So for now, I'll just say once again, as I say every time, please go to the show notes, check out the links. Uh, oh, download the... Uh, I have a free download for you today from this podcast. And it's my six uh, six rules of Twitter for vacation rental owners. And it just follows on from my little bit of a Twitter rant. And uh, hopefully it'll give you some tips on how to really use Twitter and get the best out of it. While you're there on the show notes, please go ahead and click on the iTunes link and it will take you across to iTunes and leave me a review. I'd love to hear from you. And talking about loving to hear from you, email me, heather at cottageblogger.com. If you've got any comments, if you've got any suggestions for the for the blog or for the podcast, um, we really like to get those messages. So thanks a lot for listening and I'll be with you next week. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.